Hello everybody and welcome to what I'll call an episode one, but I don't know if it really is going to be an episode one. This is not, uh, I am not playing in this game between the National League All-Stars and the American League All-Stars. This is background gameplay. Um, this is, you can tell from the episode, this is baseball talk. I'm just going to talk about baseball and what's going on around baseball. So, um, yeah, I have quite a, quite a bit to talk about. Let me just quickly go over and open up this, there, where's, okay, there. Open up my notes, and you see here, well, you don't see, uh, let me just get it open quickly. Oh, hold on, MLB. There. Okay. So, yeah, I this is like, instead of having a podcast, because I don't have time to do one right now, um, yeah, I'm just going to talk baseball for a bit. I think the first thing to talk about is um, just the standings, really. Talk about how the baseball season's going. We'll start from the NL West, and then we'll just, well, we'll start from the NL East and work our way to the AL. Um... Something that's really surprising me is the Braves. The Braves are two and a half up on the Phillies, who are second in the NL East. And then the Nationals are three and a half back. Well, one, why are the Braves doing so good? Two, why are the Phillies doing so good? Three, what are the Nationals doing? What are they doing? And then you got the Mets, who are 32 and 46, and the Marlins, who are 32 and 50. So, yeah, those teams, you can just... Say, nope, they're done. They're not doing anything this year. Because they're not. They're already out of the playoffs, pretty much. Can't fall behind that much and then move on. Per, at, this point in the, at this point in baseball. You may have been able to in the past, but in baseball nowadays, it just doesn't happen. In the NL Central, Milwaukee, the Brewers, they uh, lead the Cubs by two games. Who are in the Cubs are second. Cardinals... Four games out in third, Pirates eight and a half out in fourth, and Cincinnati twelve and a half out in fifth. Milwaukee, I knew would do good this year. They are actually my pick to win the World Series. The Cubs, they've never done good in their entire lives. They are on. Let's see, how many years has, has it been? Is this going to be two? So after this year, so 107 years till so they win the World Series again. I, <clears throat> I cursed them again. Yeah, they're not. They're gonna maybe make a wild card team, but the Brewers they're gonna they're gonna win everything. They're just gonna win everything. Um, Cardinals, I thought they'd do a bit better than they're doing, and the Pirates are doing better than I thought they'd do. So yeah, not bad. Just not bad from any from any point of view aside from the Cardinals, really. Now in the National League West, the Diamondbacks are three and a half up on the Dodgers, which is crazy. The Dodgers are in second. And my pick to win that division and go to the NLCS isn't doing so great. The San Francisco Giants five and a half out of the division. They're sitting at 42 and 40. Um, see if the season ended right now, at least for the Giants... That that's the end of the basketball season. We're already halfway through the season, which sucks. Anyways, Colorado Rockies are eight out of the division. They're sitting at thirty-nine and forty-two, and the Padres twelve out, thirty-six and forty-seven. In my opinion, they've already won the same amount of games that they did last. <coughs> last one. Well, yeah. Sorry. Excuse me. Um, they've already pretty much won more games than they should have last year. Um, with the addition of Eric Hosmer in the offseason, they're doing a bit better. Now it's time for the American League, starting in the AL East. So, the Boston Red Sox lead the New York Yankees by half a game. Both, both teams are going to do good. Whoever doesn't win the division is going to win the wild card game and then play the other in the ALDS. So, it's really just who will have home field advantage. Um, then Tampa Bay, they're, they're, in, they're in third in the division. Now, get this. Yankees are half a game out in second. Now, the Rays, like I said, who are in third, are 14 games out of the division. 16 and a half Toronto, 
and then 30 and a half games out of the division are the Baltimore Orioles. They suck. They're terrible. And I'm going to the or to the Orioles game on uh, Orioles Yankees game on August 25th, I believe. Doubleheader Yankees Orioles. Now in the American League Central, we already knew this. Cleveland, they're winning. Minnesota's in second. They're eight games out of the division. Detroit, nine and a half out. They're third. White Sox, 16 and a half out. They're fourth. And the Royals, 19 and a half out in fifth. And finally, cap it, cap, 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 capping it all off for the standings portion of this. The Houston Astros lead the AL West by three games over the Seattle Mariners, who are 20 games over 500. Good job, Seattle. Oakland, the Athletics are 10 out. The Angels are 12 and a half out. And the Texas Rangers in fifth, yes, are 18 games out of the division. So that sucks for them. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Um, well, one thing that happened earlier today is the fact that Christian Yelich for the Brewers, this is really bad because he's having a very good year. He, uh, he left the game with back tightness. I'm hoping he's not injured too bad because, like I said, I want, I'd want probably predict them to win the World Series, so I need them to win as many games as possible so they'll have home field advantage. That is saying that they make the uh, World Series, which they will. Um, hold on. I'm in the wrong spot. There we go. Now, uh, hold on. Is that what I want to talk about right now? Um, I don't know if that's exactly what I want to talk about right at this point. Um... Oh, um, what I am going to talk about right now is, I don't know if it was last night or the night before, but a player on the Milwaukee Brewers, they were facing the Kansas City Royals, and it was their, it was their pitcher, there was a little chopper, he grabbed it, had to do a barrel roll to grab it, and Alex Gordon, the man who hit it, running down the base paths, after the barrel roll, pitcher gets back to his feet, dives forward, and tags out Alex Gordon in an amazing play. That was absolutely crazy. Uh, let's see. Brandon Crawford. Um, let's see, he walked things off for the uh, Giants tonight as well. Um, as well as Alex Bregman for the Houston Astros. Okay, so, yeah, Astros went on a walk-off, Giants went on a walk-off. Um, what the heck, apparently Michael Conforto signed a Pop-Tart today. Um, this was the play I was talking about. And then the dive tags out Alex Gordon. Crazy play, like, I'm telling you, it was an amazing play. Like, okay, now this, this is what I wanted to talk about when I said, do I want to talk about that now? I'm going to read this straight off Bleacher Report. This is really weird and creepy. A dead body was found in a walk-in freezer Tuesday at SunTrust Park, the home of the Atlanta Braves. The Cobb County Police confirmed the man was a third-party contractor whose body was discovered by another member of the same company. Like, seriously. Who? One. One, somebody on the contracting team is very messed up. There is some really, really messed up person on that contract place. Two. If you're going to hide a body, don't, don't hide it in a walk-in freezer at a major league ballpark. Like, that's re- no. Just no. And then, just... Like, just why? Why are you gonna go kill somebody? Like, what'd they ever do to you? 
This is still an inactive investigation, so I am unable to speculate whether or not foul play is a factor, Officer Sarah O'Hara said. Um, the Braves began Tuesday night's game as scheduled against the Cincinnati Reds after an 11-inning win on Monday. Atlanta is in the midst of a six-game homestead that also includes a series against the Baltimore Orioles. SunTrust Park is in its second year of use after the Braves moved from Turner Field in 2017. Okay, so, brand new stadium, some dude on that contracting team, well, this is my speculation, is like, you know, this stadium needs some history. How about I kill a dude, put him in a freezer, and then the stadium will be known for something. No, that's really weird. That's creepy. Don't kill people, please. Uh, just don't do that. It's not a good idea. First of all, J.D. Martinez, um, well, this is a video that'll tell you how a season's going, pretty much. At 26. Shot to right. Deep. Have a solo back. And a kiss and goodbye. Another one out of here. Yeah, J.D. Martinez is like 25 home runs or something right now. Um... Oh, wow, the Mets general manager is taking a leave so he can battle cancer. Uh, good luck to him on that. It'd be very sad if he passed away. Now, this... After coming off that... Oh! Ooh, Max Scherzer just got drilled in this gameplay. Oh! Yeah, Max Scherzer's dead. Okay, whatever. Why, do, why is there all this dark stuff? Like... Mets GM battling cancer. Matt Scherzer just got almost killed. And somebody murdered a dude. And then threw him in a freezer in Atlanta. Ugh. So how about we switch to something a bit on a brighter note. Then again, there's just some strange stuff happening in baseball. Archie Bradley, who is a reliever of the, um, of, uh, for the Atlanta, oh my, uh, for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, so during an appearance on the, uh, 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 no, 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 no. So, so this is Archie Bradley. This is Archie Bradley talking, I believe. So it's a 2-2 two -two count, and I'm like, man, I have to pee. So I, I, ha I have to go pee. So I run in our bathroom real quick. I'm ready to go. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so basically he pooped his pants in the middle of the game, and then he came out on the mound, and he looked really stupid. I bet. Um, let's see. Let me... Okay. First of all, yeah, well, not, well, not first of all, but another thing I want to talk about. Um... Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays, yeah, they're 14 out of the division, but they swept the Yankees in four. No. I mean, yeah, they swept the Yankees in four, then swept the Nationals in three. They won seven in a row against two of the best teams in baseball. Um, that's, that's just crazy, like... Let me look. What, uh, what what other like specific team should we talk about? Let's see if there's any Yankee news. Um. Oh, on this day in 2009, the great Mario uh, Mariano Rivera becomes the second ever pitcher to record 500 saves. I believe the first Trevor Hoffman, maybe. Guess. Um. I think, I think so, yeah. Alright, let me quickly click on this and see, uh, who is apparently the, uh, let's see, so the, this is Bleacher Report's thoughts on who the best players, who, alright, so the best catcher in baseball, in their opinion, is JT Real Muto. I think it's Buster Posey? Okay, interesting. So those are number one and two. Real Muto, Real Muto 1, 
Posey too. I think it'd be the other way around, in my opinion. Um, first baseman, Freddie Freeman one, Joey Votto two. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. Jesus Aguilar is six. I think he'd be third. Brandon Belt's third. All right, that makes sense to me. Okay. Aguilar is doing crazy stuff right now. Best second baseman in the baseball, their opinion, is Jose Altuve. I'll, I'll give that to him. Scooter Jeanette, two. Okay. Glaber Torres, four. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Scooter Jeanette's two. I think I already said that, though. Um, the best third baseman, number one, Jose Ramirez. Um, number two, Ma Matt Chapman, and, um, Nolan Arenado, four. In his preseason rank, he was number one. Interesting. Okay. Chris Bryant, who was two in the preseason rank, now sits at rank nine. He's not doing good. Um, short stops, number one, Francisco Lindor. Francisco Lindor, my all-time favorite. Not all-time favorite. Not my all-time favorite. My favorite current player, Francisco Lindor, for shortstop. Then Andrelton Simmons, two. Carlos Correa, three. Where is Andrew? Where are you coming from with Andrelton Simmons? No. I don't know what you're talking about. Simmons is, like, way down there. Behind Correa, behind Crawford, who, in my opinion is the second, then Correa. Gene Zagura, he's four. No, on, not on this list. This is my opinion. Manny Machado's not even a shortstop anymore. You can't put him on that. Oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, he is. He's a shortstop now. All right, I got it. Okay, you know, what I, you know what I meant. Outfielders. So, the top three are Mike Trout, Mookie Betts, and Aaron Judge, and then, so we'll say that those are the top ones, and then the top twos are Lorenzo Cain, Eddie Rosario, and Mitch Haneker. I'd agree with that, and then Christian Yelich, Nick Markakis, and, ooh, wait, oh, that's ten. Yelich is ten, and then it'd be Markakis, Nimmo, and Springer, uh, seven, eight, and nine. I'd say it'd be Markak, no, I, I'd say it'd be Nimmo, Yelich, Markakis. My opinion. Starting pitchers. What? What? Okay, one. Okay, I get that he's injured, yes. Clayton Kershaw is not on this list. Chris Dale is fifth. Or, sorry, sixth. Jacob DeGrom is one. Okay, he's having a good year. Good for him. Corey Kluber, two. Luis Severino, who is having the best pitching year in all of baseball right now, currently. He should be number one. He's fifth. I don't know what Bleacher Report's talking about on that. Relief pitchers. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna mess with that. It's so stupid. Whatever. All that's doing is making me mad. All that is doing is making me mad. My it's just No. Reese Hoskins, he's having a very good season for the Phillies. I'm just going to go on a different note. Um, Jason Worth retires. Yes. Jason Worth, after like 15 or 16 years, he retires from Major League Baseball. So, yeah. I mean, he had a good career. He won a World Series ring in 2008 with the Phillies, I believe. So, yeah, not a bad career. Not at all. Um, yeah, just going over this, I think that's kind of all I really wanted to talk about here. Um, I'm not, oh wow, the Phillies beat, on the 22nd, the Phillies beat the Nationals 12-2. Um, so, now I'm going to say my top five players, um, for, like, just my top five players currently who are playing well, like, in this week, like, currently in the MLB, who are the top players right now? Like, just based on what they're doing recently. 
Like, not all, not all time, like, Kershaw's not going to be on the list because he's injured and he's not doing great. So, my top five. Number one currently, I'm just going to have to give it to him. J.D. Martinez, 25 home runs, 10 home runs in June, like, crazy good season for him. He's got to take the number one spot on the list. There's a lot of players doing a lot of good things right now, but I think it, it, uh, this is kind of a difficult decision. I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% on this one. He might deserve to be a little further down. He's definitely in the top five right now. But I'm going to give number two to Luis Severino because he's just doing crazy good things on the mound. He's like 12-0 and 0 this year with a sub... 2.5 ERA, ERA, I think. Like, he's just having a crazy good season. So he takes the, the two spot on this list. Now the three spot. Um, there's a couple players I could give this to. Um, not 100% sure on this one as well. But I feel like he, the way, uh, yeah, no. He might make it down there. I think definitely the way he's playing right now, I'm going to have to say, hmm, I'm going to have to say that the top three player in uh, baseball, just the way he's playing currently, is going to be Mike Trout. I know, yeah, he's, he's just playing well. Speak of him, he's right there. So it's going to be Mike Trout, and then let's see. You got Trout there. Four. Who would I give four to in my mind? Um, maybe Jose Ramirez, but I don't. I'm not sure. I I know I'm passing up on a lot of people. You know what? Four is gonna go to Marcel Ozuna on the Cardinals, who is absolutely raking right now and is just doing crazy good things, like crazy good things. Like, he's hitting so many home runs, like, it, it's, he's doing amazing. He is just doing absolutely phenomenal. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give an honorable mention. This is not place five. Honorable mention, Jose Ramirez. He would be sixth if this was a top six list. It's top five list. He places sixth, but he's an honorable mention. And I'm going to have to give the number five spot to the first baseman who is playing incredibly well right now for a team that is not doing incredibly well right now. That would be Joey Votto for the Reds because there's not much else to say about it. Joey Votto is having such a good year. Now, I'm going to do top five teams. Top five teams doing well. Now, there's a bunch of different things that, there's a bunch of different teams that could be it. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think, I think, yes, I'm going to go with the number one team right now is going to be, now like I said, as of what they are doing recently. Not what they're not what they're not really based on their entire record. I'm going like past two weeks maybe. And recently, number one spot gonna go to It's gonna go to the Milwaukee Brewers. They're just they're doing great. And I was actually thinking this team won and then I realized I, I just feel like I'd get There'd be so many people mad if I pick this team as number one. So I'll give them number two instead. The number two team is going to be the Tampa Bay Rays. Like I said recently, last seven games, sweep the Yankees, sweep the Nationals. So based on recently, yeah, they're doing pretty good. Yeah, they're doing really good. So they get the two spot. The three spot going to go to the Boston Red Sox. Mostly because of J.D. Martinez, but nonetheless, he is on the Red Sox. He wasn't actually he wasn't accusation for them. So um, yeah, just gonna just gonna 
give it to them. The Red Sox take the three spot. New York Yankees are going to take the four spot because they're the Yankees. You can't have a power rankings without the Yankees. Let's be honest. Five spot. Going to go to the Houston Astros. The Astros are leading the AL West. Just having an all-around great year. Well, those are my opinions on these things. Like I said, my opinion, my choice. You might have a different opinion. That's your own opinion. I mean, I'm. you might be right. But then again, there is no right in an opinion. So, you think what you want. I think what I want. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Tell me who your top five players currently are. Tell me who your top five teams currently are. Um, tell me who you think is going to make the All-Star game. Like, seriously, there's a lot of players who I know are making the All-Star game. Some I'm not sure. Bryce Harper said that he'll compete in the Home Run Derby if he makes the All-Star team. Um... So, is he going to make the All-Star team? I'm not sure. He's in a bit of a slump right now. That's why he wasn't able to make the top list. Because he started off the year, like, smoking the ball out of the park. He'd hit home runs every game. Juan Soto. You know what? Juan Soto. Juan Soto's doing great. He's going to be the NL Rookie of the Year. Him or Christianville. Quiston. Did I just say Quiston? Him or Christian Villanueva. One of them is going to win the National League Rookie of the Year. Um, and then AL Rookie of the Year, Labor Torres. Definitely. MVP. No, oh, man, it's so early to say who I, think the na who I think the National League and American League most valuable players are going to be. Like, that's a really difficult thing to say. Now, ugh, let me think. I think National League MVP. Oh, there's so many players. It might be easier for me to start with American League MVP, but then again, I'm not sure. Like, there's so many good players. Um, let's see. So, honestly. Like I said, there's we're not even to the all-star break. It's so difficult to predict. If he keeps up what he's doing, then you better bet that, yeah, J.D. Martinez is going to win the American League MVP. He came very close to winning the National League MVP last year. He finished, like, third. And he would have probably won it if he had played for, uh, uh, if he had played for the Diamondbacks all season. So, yeah, I'm going to go with J.D. Martinez for the AL, now in the NL. Um, oh, NL MVP. You know, I think, no, I'd go with Joey Votto, but the, but the, uh, the Reds, they would need to be doing a bit better for me to pick Joey Votto. So I'm not going to be able to pick Joey Votto to win the, uh, National League MVP because just based on the team he's on, he's not going to win it because of that. I know it's unfair, but that's just kind of the way it goes. He's not going to win the MVP award because of the team he is on. Uh, let me... Hold on. Let me open this, and then this, and then let's see. NL MVP. Um, hmm. Like, it's really hard to say. Now, this... This, I know a lot of people are going to think is way out there, and I'm out of my mind. NL MVP? <laughs> Jesus Aguilar. He's been raking it as of late. It's early. I'm going to probably change my pick before the end of the year. But currently, Jesus Aguilar is going to win the National League MVP. Cy Young Awards, American League, Luis Severino, easy. National League, maybe a bit more difficult, but not really. Max Scherzer, pretty easy. So, those are my picks for the awards. Let me make sure I'm not missing any. That ball's crushed deep. Scherzer is going to give up a double. All right, what are the hits? Okay, that's, NL has one. Um, 
the seat. So let me make sure I didn't miss any. Rookie of the Year, I said Juan Soto and Glaber Torres, MVP. I said Jesus Aguilar and J.D. Martinez. Cy Young, I said Luis Severino and Max Scherzer. Uh, uh, what, am I missing anything? Hank Aaron? That doesn't matter to me. It's just going to be whoever wins the MVP, pretty much. Unless it's a pitcher, but it's not going to be a pitcher unless Luis Severino goes, like, however many starts he has now and doesn't lose. And he continues to pitch the way he's pitching with, like, 12-plus strikeouts a game. Then he'll win MVP, but I don't see that happening. So, I think, yeah, Hank Aaron Award's going to go to the respective MVPs. I don't think I'm missing any other awards. Pretty sure I'm not. See the last year's American League MVP, Jose Altuve. Last year's Cy Young winner, Max Scherzer. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Oh, Gold Gloves. I don't really care, frankly. You can pick who you want. Silver Slugger, same thing. Pick who you want. I think we, it's like kind of obvious. You know who's gonna win what. So there's no point in going over it because it's going to be Arenado a gold glove. It's going to be Crawford a gold glove. It's going to be, like, Freeman a gold glove. All sorts of garbage like that. So, oh, uh, Blue Jays send left field Steve Pierce and cash considerations to Boston for prospect Santiago Espinal. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's going to pr pretty much wrap up this, um, just like I like the title of the video says, Baseball Talk. Th that is what this is. This is Baseball Talk, bottom line. Um, yeah. It's not quite a podcast, but it's something. I hope you enjoyed, and like, I, like I've been saying in all my other videos, I need to get on the video grind. So I have videos pre-recorded so I'm able to upload them while I am on vacation. So that's going to wrap up this episode of Baseball Talk. There might be another one coming at some point. I'm not sure. We'll leave it at that. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.